Welcome to the MindView Business Edition video tutorial on how to build a Gantt chart. To begin the building of the Gantt chart, simply choose the File menu from the top left, select New, and choose to create a new Gantt project. The Gantt chart is separated into two sections, the Gantt outline on the left and the duration bars on the right. As you can see, there is a simplified Gantt Tools ribbon at the top of the interface with all of the corresponding features that will be used within the Gantt chart creation. To begin, left click in line number one. In this line, you'll enter the name of the project. In this case, we will simulate a product launch. Under the Gantt Tools tab, we can choose to create our first deliverable by selecting the task icon from the top. In this case, we will list planning. To create an additional line item at the same level as planning, I would choose the task icon again. In this case, we will type product. I can also utilize keyboard shortcuts by hitting the enter key on my keyboard. We will then list marketing and hit enter two times and finish off the deliverable sales. All of the panels in the Gantt chart are movable, so I can choose to drag the divider line to the right and extend the task name by double left clicking on the vertical row. To then define the individual tasks that belong to the planning deliverable, I would left click the planning line and choose to create a sub task. In this case, we will type setup team. Again, to create a line item at the same level as setup team, I would go back to the task icon. As you can see, we have now defined several levels within our Gantt chart. The name of our project, the first level deliverable, and the subtasks that belong to planning. I would then continue with product, marketing, and sales, and add the corresponding tasks that belong to those deliverables. As you can see, I have finalized my project plan. Four main deliverables, and corresponding subtask items. Now it's time to go through and start adding the corresponding task information with regards to start dates, end dates, durations, predecessors, completion levels, and even resources. If I determine that any columns are unnecessary under the Gantt Tools tab, I can choose to add or remove any existing columns. When defining a start date or end date in MindView, I simply can choose the left click and execute the calendar item and notify the start date of a specific task. In this case, we will choose the 22nd of April. In order to alter the end date of a task, I would update the duration. As you can see by increasing it to two days or three days, the corresponding end date of that task is adjusted. I do not want to get in the habit of affecting a start date and the end date. I will choose one or the other and use the duration to forecast the opposite. When defining a project resource, I can left click in the resource column and hand type that resource into the field. If I need to define a dependent relationship or a predecessor between tasks, I can choose to left click on the duration bar pull straight down, and drag and drop the line to the corresponding task. I've now created a finish to start dependency between tasks three and four. I also have the ability to work within the duration bars themselves. By right-clicking to extend or decrease durations, I can left-click and drag to change start dates of a specific task, and by hovering the left side of the duration bar and left clicking, I can increase the completion level of a task. I could also increase the completion level by left clicking in the completion field and selecting it from the drop down list. To add additional task information to a line item, I would simply left click the desired task and choose the task information button from the Gantt Tools ribbon. This would allow me to change the name of a specific line item, the duration, 
to choose if it's an estimated or accurate date, start dates and end dates, completion levels, priorities, and even choose to make an item inactive in the Gantt chart. A popular feature for project managers would be to apply constraint to a specific task. If you need to lock a task's start date or end date, or define when you can specifically start a task. For more advanced users, you can also determine if a task is effort driven and the standard task types. Under the predecessors tab, I can also define a dependency using the drop down menu, selecting the related branch, and choose to apply a different type of dependency finish to finish, finish to start, start to finish, or start to start. I can even choose to add any corresponding lag time that's necessary. I can also move forward and apply a resource to a specific task by entering that information into the list. Or I can choose to activate the project resources button and manually enter my entire team for quick access within the dropdown list. Here I can import an existing resource pool. If I'm an Outlook user, I can link up to my address book. I could also list my active directory. Or if you're a Matchware shared workspace user, I can activate and access my resources that are loaded within the shared workspace. For this example, I will simply type in an additional name. Once I have entered the resources into the resource list, I can simply left click in the resource box and select that resource from the drop down list. By locating the task timeline panel from the right side of my screen, I can also include some further project information. Here I can determine the true project start or end date by selecting project information. I can affect the project calendar, which allows me to define what one day equals within the project plan. I can locate the project calendars to define specific working hours on various days, if there happens to be a holiday or a non-working hour. And each individual resource can also support their own unique resource calendar. All of this information is carried over to our exports to Microsoft Project. Here's an example of a more complete Gantt chart. As you can see, the corresponding task elements have been entered, start dates, end dates, and durations, predecessors have been defined, resources have been applied. You can also notice that some color bars have been located within the duration bars themselves. To update the color of a bar, I simply choose the line item in the outline view, select the format tab, and select a various fill color, outline color, and pattern. Under the design tab, I can also choose to visualize the task name and resource name, giving me more transparency when looking at the Gantt chart itself. I can also associate various icons within the Gantt chart outline by selecting a specific task, going under the insert menu, and applying an icon. This helps when prioritizing information and communicating the project plan to the group. If I need to add any descriptions of specific tasks, I can select the task and choose to apply a text note. The text note would then be applied to the branch and can be accessed by hovering the pop-up and left-clicking on the text note. As you can see, the text note editor looks, feels, and functions like a standard Microsoft Word processor. I also have the advantage of attaching supporting documentation by selecting the corresponding branch, going under the Home or Insert tab, and choosing to attach a file. I can browse on my computer for the corresponding file, and it would then be available under the attachment icon, and I can execute that file by left clicking. I also have the ability to insert branch pictures by choosing a specific branch and selecting to insert a branch picture. As you can see, the branch picture can be displayed by hovering the icon. All of this Gantt chart information can be further updated within the MindView interface, or if I need to export this to another program, I can simply choose File, 
Export and choose the desired program. As you can see, Microsoft Project is an option for both exporting to as well as importing from Microsoft Project.